Hello everyone and welcome back to the Where Does It Come From podcast. This time we're talking all things menstrual products and I have Christine Ritchie, and I said that wrong, <laughs> and I have Christine McRitchie with me from Earthwise Girls. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Christine to introduce herself, tell us about Earthwise Girls and share her journey. Hi, yeah, so um, Earthwise Girls started in 2009 and it was actually a spin-off from my washable nappy company, Blush Pants. Um, so that's how I first found out about all these things like moon cups and reusable sanitary pads. I was a bit sceptical to be, to be honest at first, but I figured if I'm gonna sell these things that I ought to try them and that's how I got started myself. Um, and then after a few years, it became quite apparent that a lot of the people buying our menstrual products were not buying nappies as well. So I thought, well, perhaps I should have a, a website for, for everybody else because that baby stage is quite a specific stage in your life. And there are far more people out there having periods than there are having babies at any one time. So, yeah, so Earthwise Girls was born and now that's what I do all the time. Um, and I sell all sorts of things to do with periods, period pants, menstrual cups, uh, sanitary pads, lots of different brands. So there's lots of choice and I try to give advice where it's needed as well. It's really interesting what you say. I mean, far more people have periods than are in the, the, the um, stage of having a new baby. I mean, periods are such an everyday thing, aren't they? I mean, I would mm -hmm. say half, half the population have them, but probably almost half. Well, I don't know. Um, large part of the population have them. <laughs> and um, they've always been seen as a quite taboo and almost shameful I mean women being sent away from home and you know from their tribe when they have they're on their period and you don't talk about it and if you have period pain you just suck it up so what do you think has changed in society that make has made periods a much more acceptable thing to talk about I think there's been a, a massive change people are much more willing to talk about all sorts of personal issues now I remember when I was a teenager and tampons were starting to get advertised on the TV and my parents would be like, oh, this is terrible, you know, who needs to see that on the telly? And now nobody thinks twice about it. It's, it's you know, you might groan, but it's there and everyone accepts it. So there's been a, a bit of a societal shift, I think, in what we're prepared to accept um, being sort of front and centre of the conversation. I think social media has got a lot to do with it as well. Um, it gives people the confidence to talk about things with strangers and sometimes with people that they know, but without having that face to face conversation, which somehow it makes things a bit more awkward, doesn't it? Mm. Um, whereas when you're talking through a keyboard and just asking other people on, you know, a well-known parenting group or whatever, um, <laughs> uh, then you, you feel a bit, perhaps a bit more confident of asking slightly more awkward questions like, you know, why is my postpartum bleed lasting a bit longer? Does anybody else get this bleeding in between periods? And actually something that I set up years and years ago on Facebook is a chat group exactly for that sort of thing called Bloody Waste. And it's not a group that I use for selling it's more supposed to be for people talking to other people about all sorts of things to do with reusable period products and periods and and bodies in general really and like you say um half the population is going to experience periods at some point during their lifetime and at any one time if you take out the ones that are too young and too old probably at least a quarter of the population mm. is in the phase where they're regularly having them so it is normal yeah so it's about time that we didn't you know we didn't shy away from that and and we need to be a bit more open about our bodies and not afraid to talk about it and not afraid to say it's period pain sir at school you know or it's um or to your boss you know actually I want to work from home today because it's my time of the month yeah. and now you know that's it's amazing that we've got to a point where that might actually be a conversation you can have rather than going to work with your heaviest heavy flow pad on um, times two and hoping you don't bleed through your, through your protection. And feeling so, absolutely awful. 
feeling awful yeah you feel rubbish and and you're worried about it and you get that that god awful feeling when you stand up when it's your heavy day and everything goes whoosh yeah. um and you're thinking oh god <laughs> i was gonna make a cup of tea but maybe i need to i think i will I, I, yeah, I think... I'll just take my bag you know <laughs> you're so right about the normalizing i was thinking that word when you were speaking it's normalizing it because i remember being the same as you back in school and they were starting to talk about tampons publicly and I remember we had a talk then someone came in in equivalent of year six and gave us girls a talk on what a tampon was you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> the boys were not allowed to be in the room the boys were sent out you know yeah that was the, the really weird thing about it and certainly through high school when you know you have to bring in something with you to change during the day and it was just a nightmare absolute nightmare trying to hide the fact you know you wouldn't want anyone to know that this was going on I, I hope girls don't have to go through that stuff anymore it's 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 terrible but yeah it's a it's a it's a really interesting thing how it's been normalized I'm, I'm really glad about that it has and you're obviously doing a great job of normalizing it as well so what's that Facebook group again just say that again so people can go on if they want to yeah it's called the bloody waste the bloody waste can't forget that one <laughs> Uh, but yeah I think it's really important for, for young girls and parents and a anyone to make this completely normal and, and I think for health reasons as well because if something does go wrong you know if you miss a period or if you know something's not quite right that you're anemic or something that needs to be sorted out so people need to be able to mm. say, you know yeah definitely okay um so one it's a big a big deal I certainly didn't know about this when I was um younger and what are the key themes of sustainable menstrual products? What is there out there um, and how do they work and how are they better for the planet than what's the age old sanitary towels and tampons type solution? Yeah, so there are a lot of options out there. Um, I'll sort of swing that around and start with how they're better, actually, because uh, funnily enough, I was writing a blog post the other day about Natricare, which is a uh, it's the only brand of single use products that we stock. And the reason for that is that they were created because uh, because the lady who started it, Susie, was really fed up of not being able to find products that didn't have dioxins and plastics and, and all sorts of weird and wonderful chemicals in them. Um, and there's still, even now, she set up Natural Care over 30 years ago, mm -hmm. back at the end of the 80s. And even now, um, disposable products do not have to declare on the packaging what's in them. So you don't know what you're putting in your body. You're trusting that it's okay, uh, which is a slightly scary thought when you think about it, because we also trusted these same manufacturers at the end of the day with things like makeup and um, cleansing products and things, which many of which have now been found to have carcinogens uh, and all sorts of harmful things, either harmful to us or to the planet, or in many cases, both. Um, and if they're not known to be harmful, they're certainly questionable. So that's that's one of the reasons to step away from it. And and I suppose the other reason, of course, the big reason is sustainability and the sheer amount of waste, which is where the bloody waste name came from, actually. Um, but if you think about it, you know, if you go through a period and you use, I don't know, a box of tampons, you might think that's not creating a lot of waste. Well, think about each of your tampons has been individually wrapped in a little layer to stop it shedding. That little layer is made of something plasticky to stop the fibres from shedding inside you because they now know that the rayon that's in a lot of tampons will leave behind little fibres inside you, which increases the risk of toxic shock syndrome, which is something you can get if you use tampons. Um, so you've also, you've, as well as that, you've then got the individual wrappers that are around the tampons themselves to keep them sterile, uh, which they're not. And then you've got the outer box. Then you've got any plastic packaging that was around the outer box. Then you've got the outer box that the shop received the pack of tampons in. Then you've got the plastic that was around the pallet on the outer boxes. You know, it just goes on exponentially. It's the amount of rubbish that is attributable to your period. And given that you're going to have thousands of periods in your lifetime, the amount of rubbish builds up and builds up and builds up. And once you start to see it, you can't unsee it. Mm. Um, so so then, then you start to think, well, okay, is there something I could be doing better? So um so yeah you can there's for internal products there's loads of options there's uh, the most popular thing for internal products is menstrual cups um one of the best known ones is moon cup which is a uk brand that we've stopped since forever and they are based in brighton make it all over here uh recycled packaging and everything 
there are lots and lots of brands out there now and they meet your needs in different ways. So we've got a little table on our website that helps you to work out what you need from a menstrual cup. It's not as simple as I'll just buy a menstrual cup and it'll work. But for a lot of people it is, but there's also, there are other things to think about. So you need to think about whether you're uh, heavy or light flow, whether you're very active. If you've got a really strong pelvic core, you might find that certain cups work better for you and other cups just won't because they won't pop open because your muscles will be too strong. Um, and also some people have uh, a very high or very low cervix and being aware of that will help you to use a menstrual cup successfully as well, even being aware of where it is. Uh, I remember, and it changes as well. They're, they're tricky little things, cervix. And well, I, I mean, certainly personally, I've had the experience of mine deciding it was going to sit in a different position to where it always had during my period. So I'm getting leaks and thinking, I'm supposed to be the expert. Why am I getting <laughs> leaks? And uh, okay, let's go back to basics and, you know, check where things are. Oh, right. Okay. It's down there now. So I need to angle my cup differently because there where I was putting it where it always went. And, you know, I've got my little cup sitting where it sits and, and the cervix is going, no, I'm going to shoot it all down the side. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so a bit like a naughty child, but it's, um, you know, there's a lot to take in um, and we can help with that process. Um, if, you, if internal things aren't your thing, don't fancy a moon cup. You've got visions of psycho and blood flying all over the bathroom. <laughs> Unlikely, it's never happened to me. But, you know, it could happen, I suppose, but no, it won't. Um, then you've got other options like period pants and reusable sanitary pads. So if you're familiar with using sanitary pads and that's your comfort zone, then reusable ones are a really simple switch. I always think if you're going to switch, then maybe start with panty liners first, because that's something that you're using on the days when you're less worried about leakage and stuff. So you can get the hang of the idea of what sort of fabric you like and what sort of lengths you like and then you know, next month, maybe build up your confidence and go for something for your medium days or your, even your heavier days. And you can get pads that are super long as well that are designed for really heavy periods. So people with endometriosis, people who, who bleed excessively um, and also for postpartum bleeding as well. So there's a lot of choice. And the latest thing, of course, is period pants, which have really been a bit of a revolution over the last few years. They've just come out of nowhere. And so many people are in love with the idea, including people who never would have thought about reusable sanitary pads. So they are a fantastic option for many, many people. I think they're brilliant for um, school children, actually, because they look like normal pants. So you don't have that embarrassment of, can people see my pad? A PE, um, which is it is still a thing. People, girls do worry. Um, kids do find it a bit. You know, it's it's a worrying time, isn't it? Going through puberty, it's a very mm -hmm. sensitive time. There's a lot of hormones. There's a lot of confidence issues, and if you can make it slightly easier with a pair of pants, then why not? Exactly. So yeah, and the great thing about them as well is because pants have the protection built in into the gusset unlike a pad you're not going to have any slippage issues so if you use a, a throwaway pad you have the sticky bits mm -hmm. and I don't know about you but certainly I've had the experience of the sticky bits curling up and then sticking yeah. to me and oh, it's just grim um, yeah. or even worse you rip the thing off your pants and it doesn't all come off no and you're left with this you oh this grim sticky bloody mess in your pants they change shape as well don't they they kind of change shape and not quite do what they're meant to be doing it's, it's not well it's that's not it yeah it's not a nice thing it's like do you want the wings or do you not want the wings well no. I don't know if I want the wings you know are they going to curl up and stick to my thighs you know or, or anywhere no it's not it's that there's nothing ideal about about any of it really it is everyone what it has is their to deal with it. everyone has Every, their exactly things, everyone has their preference and period yeah. pants are really I mean they're amazing and you can get high-waisted low-waisted bikini style boxer style you can get ones for heavy flow, ones for light flow. You can, we even do a thong one. So, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know. So if you're in love with your thongs and you want to carry on having your thongs in use through your period on a light flow day, you can. So there you go. Mm, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. I mean, I, I certainly wish they existed when I was a teenager because oh, it yeah. gave me so much angst. It would have been absolutely lovely. So, teenagers of the world, try them. So, a few questions <laughs> based on what you've been saying. I've been scribbling down because I, I've had lots of questions. I'm hoping that the audience will have <laughs> similar questions. Um, the first one is it's a reflection, really, that talking about 
all the plastic and the packaging um, in each individual tampon or towel or whatever, it just makes me think there's an industry out there that's making a lot of money out of our periods, basically. So they're charging mm. you to go and buy these things, they're adding these extra costs with the amounts of packaging. And it, it feels, in a way, it your movement is reclaiming our periods, in a way, you know, because it does seem like the industry is it's something we have no choice about is having a period or not having a period and then you have to go out and pay money for it and they're charging money because they're adding all of these other layers onto it so it doesn't seem very fair that's sort of a reflection there Mm. another thing I think that's been a challenge for a lot of people I don't know if you found this with reusable anything but especially hygiene things is hygiene so we've been indoctrinated for years and years that you have it's about cleanliness about hygiene and how clean these things are they're always pure white aren't they and they look pure and beautiful and everything so for people who are concerned about the hygiene issues of reusing their period products what would you say to that um well basic for a start most of the disposable things that you find they're not sterile they might give an impression of it um and let's face it who really wants to go roller skating around in white hot pants on their period not most people so really no <laughs> even my so it reminds me of that body form Amber. i don't know if you remember there used to be a woman who would wear a skin tight hot pants thing and then she had dogs on a lead and she was roller skating and go that's oh, it. Body for him. And just, what no 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 i think i'm much more with the uh the the recent ice skating advert with the the plus size girl who's an ice skater who's sort of not going to let it all stop her so it's again that's another thing that's changing isn't it that the models the way the advertising's being presented even by the mainstream brands is becoming so much more inclusive of our body shapes being different we yeah. don't all have to be a size eight and you know, with perky boobs and 18 and wearing white. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. We we can be, you know, we can be people of colour, we can be people of different shapes and sizes. So that's a positive thing that's changed just as an aside, but that's a society thing, really. Um, Yeah, as far as hygiene is concerned, yeah. Obviously, with products used internally, so like a menstrual cup, then you do need to think a little bit more carefully about hygiene. They all come with instructions and you need to sterilise your cup in between periods. And that will get rid of anything that's built up in it. They do recommend as well not to wear a cup for more than eight hours at a time. So that should cover you overnight. Um, it might be worthwhile having some period pants or pads for overnight so that you take a break from your cup during your cycle. And although there are is virtually no cases of toxic shock syndrome associated with cups and those that are seem to be linked to people having scratched themselves and things like that Mm. or not used proper hygiene methods it's still worth being aware of what the symptoms are of toxic shock syndrome um basically if you feel like you've got the flu um it's it's a bit more complicated than that but if you start to get flu-like symptoms on your period and you're using an internal product it's best to take it out use something else and talk to your gp Mm. so but as far as hygiene with the other stuff is concerned Honestly, ours go in the washing machine. I've got, there's five of us at home having periods. So, you know, we get through a fair few things. Uh, it goes in with our darks, you know, we just, just wash them. Um, you can wash them at 40. Some of them can be washed at 60, but generally speaking, because it's blood and blood, it will cook if you wash it at 60. So if you still got mm-hmm. stains on your pads and you wash it at a high temperature, you'll never get that stain out. So wash it at a low temperature. If you can do, give it a little rinse or a soak first. It's not essential though. In fact, modern washing machines, you can just go do a pre-wash and it will do exactly the same job. Mm. So um, I would also suggest perhaps not using the uh, shortest cycle uh, unless you're really desperate to get your pads back into use, in which case go for it, you know. But um, yeah, so but it's really basic hygiene. You don't boil wash your knickers. They're going in the same place. Why do you need to boil wash your period pads? They're, They're not coming out covered in anything, you know, other than blood and there's nothing wrong with that what would you do if you bled on on your pants on your jeans you'd just put them in the wash wouldn't you it's exactly the same principle yeah no it's interesting isn't it i i I don't know how much we've been influenced by this hygiene thing for marketing reasons Um, i think we have a lot yeah yeah Yeah, because it's it's, it makes complete sense what you say and i mean i love i think period pants are such a fantastic idea i think that there's and the fact that you could just wash them with normal pants and and with everything it just makes complete and utter sense 
um, mm. for me. Uh, and are they, do they work for heavy flow as well as light flow? They do, yeah. You buy what you need. So um, so with a lot of the brands, they will have pants designed specifically for your flow type. So you choose the flow that you need. So we've got some that are super heavy flow as well. Uh, so you can you really can get exactly what you need for, for the time that you need it. And yeah, I think the high waisted ones are a, a great idea as well. When I first saw them, I, I thought, oh, is that a bit granny pants? And yeah, I thought, well, pants. actually, granny pants are quite comfy. And when if you suffer from heavy periods, you're probably more likely to get all the cramping and stuff that goes yeah. with it. Um, yeah. Certainly, that's been my experience when I'm yeah. heavy it's going to be the painful time. And that's when you want your granny pants, actually. So, and your hot water bottle and duvet and chocolate. Well, I was going to, when I was younger, <laughs> I used to buy these pads, these, um, not um, menstrual pads, but the pads that I'd put on my tummy during the day that would, would warm up. They were kind of weirdly, oh, they put them yeah. on your tummy. So if you had granny pants on, that would hide that as well, which is quite nice. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. You know, I, I think it's, it's all comfort. about the comfort, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You have to be comfortable. You have to eat chocolate and you just have to <laughs> go through it, you know, um, and, and get to the other side. But it's um, for anybody listening, when you have kids, for me, it got better. <laughs> but there you go. It does change things. Mm. I mean, obviously, the, the immediate post birth thing is is something oh, yeah. else. But yeah, that's that. whatever. You're not going to be going anywhere. So I think, um, yeah, it does change. And mm. as you get older, it changes as well. Uh, I think a lot of people assume they're teenagers that when they first start, they're going to be light. And that's often not the case. That can be quite a surprise for, for people to, they buy these cute little teenage pads and then it's like they come back and they're like, ah, it's not like that. I need no. something more. Uh, for some people it is like that, but I, I think to be fair as well for for teens and tweens, any amount of blood is just ah, yeah. it's a bit worrying. So yeah, so shame. their perception of what is heavy might be very different. And there's an advantage actually if you're <laughs> might sound a bit gruesome, but if your child is having um, is have, using reusable pads, then you've got a much better eye on what they what is happening down below um so if there is anything unusual you're going to pick it up as you're probably doing the washing yeah that's really true actually. no that's really true because i think because when it was back being taboo um you didn't really know what was going on and you hear these stories going back many years of teenage pregnancies where they were able to hide it from parents and things but i think when with this kind of thing where you're actually seeing <laughs> and health problems as well and you won't you won't know but i think it's taking the taboo thing away for whatever reason it's got to be it's got good. to be a good thing got to be a good thing definitely for everyone concerned and dad being involved as well where it, where it's oh definitely yeah. yeah we have a few dads in the bloody ways to coming because they they need to discuss these products with their daughters yeah and uh and, and they want to they want to get information mm, so why true. not no it's really good um so the next thing is next question is kind of going back to the industry i suppose i mean most people that i interview on the podcast who are involved in selling more ethical um eco-friendly products have talked about forms of greenwashing that have mm. been coming in for the last sort of four or five years to try to i suppose to, in a way to try to um reposition brands in the marketplace so that people will think why well, I've been reading that these key issues about waste and everything are, are really important, but can I keep buying my usual brands? Um, is that is that the same for the menstrual product industry? Oh yeah, yeah. I, we've seen we've seen that being taken to the nth degree as a couple of well known brands of tampon makers that have produced their own menstrual cup now. So uh, so you know they obviously they see that side of things as well presumably as a threat to their 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 brand um because people were switching away so if they can find a way to engage those customers i can understand them doing it mm. but the fact of the matter is they're still producing the same things they were producing this they've not made a change they haven't suddenly said well okay well we're not going to use plastic um and and there i do find with the big companies as well that I know it can take longer for them to implement changes but they could be very powerful in a positive way if they chose to be the reality is they do things when they have to and yeah. when it suits them and things like taking rayon out of tampons only came about when there was a lot of campaigning around toxic shock syndrome and and particularly 
unfortunately it tends to be younger users teenagers and people in their 20s who die from this mm. uh, because their immune systems aren't as well developed basically so um it's it tends to be when there's a big public outcry that they make a change if they were genuinely concerned about these things they've got the funding they've got the the money behind them to understand these issues and to make the changes because they want to mm. um so i mean it's good i won't it's good that changes are being made, but there's not enough changes, certainly. And greenwashing is a massive problem always. Um, you you do get it. You even get it with, um, we even get it within the industry of reusables. Sometimes you get people who claim that their products are made in one country when they're made in another and they're just finished in the UK yes. by yeah. adding the poppers and labels on, which is another form of hoodwinking the customer. And it's just not right. Uh, yeah. That's I, a problem I, I know well, as you know. We, uh, we talked yes. about this when we were talking about um, designing some um, really, really planet kind uh, and people kind social enterprise pads last year. Um, mm. But it, it's something we see that in all of the textile industry because the things like T-shirts, which is the one that really gets my goat, is when you have a T-shirt saying made in the UK and they've literally printed it in the UK and because yeah. cotton doesn't grow in the UK anyway. So no. I have a, a T-shirt that's made in the UK. Anyway, I won't go on about that. I go on about that. <laughs> every podcast, I can guarantee it. But yes, the, um, the, the greenwashing thing is a real challenge. I think you're right that it's great that they're, they're embracing product lines like moon cups, presumably that they're made of something sustainable and not wrapped in too much packaging, but that's a, another story. But the, the, the kind of issue is, I suppose they're driven very much by what they perceive that people want and what people are yes. well, actually what people are buying rather than what they want. So it's about they'll be doing their markets. We need people to be standing up saying, I'm not buying them anymore. I'm going to be choosing something different. Or can you do something different? Because they won't listen to minorities because there's not enough money. No, it? no, no, exactly. Whereas if their their own customer base is telling them, I don't want my products wrapped in plastic anymore, then then they might make a change. Or at least mm -hmm. So that the bit you see on the shelves isn't wrapped in plastic, which is a start. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, yes, they've got. It's, and not, unfortunately, there's probably a lot of legal obligations around freight and things like that about how they need to be packaged, and that all has to change as well if the, if the industry is going to change. It is tricky. I mean, to be fair, um, when you think about it, these are products that are designed to be absorbent. Um, you need to keep water out of them, and plastic does very well at keeping water out of things. So um, I can imagine that in the days, you know, if plastic wasn't available, you'd have an awful lot more product wastage mm -hmm. from um, from dampness getting into things like tampons and things. Because if dampness got into the boxes, you might open the box and find it's mouldy. Mm -hmm. um, that's not something that typically happens these days. But I have heard cases of that happening 20, 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So clearly there is um, it, it's a problematic issue. How do we provide products that people want so we've gone completely off topic here but how do we provide these products that people want um without causing massive damage to the earth's resources because there's only a certain amount of plastic we you know maybe the answer is in finding better ways to recycle it or yeah, it's recycling um, i think with for the plastic because yeah. there's no reason why packaging can't be in recycled packaging it might be yeah. packaging because it doesn't look it doesn't matter how it looks does it if it's no um, particularly like, if it's just for things like pallet wrapping which is to protect the product um and keep it dry during transport then that should there's no reason that couldn't be plant-based it doesn't have to look fancy no no so, exactly. No, it's, yeah. it's, that kind of leads us on to my next um, question, really, is what would you like to see happen next in the industry? What are the big things coming along and what would you like the industry players to do about it? Oh, now that's tricky. Um, I don't know, really. I think um, you've got me on that one. That's what would I like them to do about it? Packaging. Yeah. <laughs> I think really... I want to see more public awareness of the products. And we're starting <coughs> excuse me. We're starting to see more people uh, getting into schools. Moon Cup have done a big outreach program for years, but a lot of brands are starting to embrace that. We've got in Wales, we've got a lot of um, movement on and Scotland as well on reusable period products. There is availability for these things to British schools in some areas, but it's not been embraced in the same way. I think the more um, in order to get 
these things as normalized as possible, bearing in mind that reusable brands don't generally have the same kind of budget. We need to do it through education and we need to do it at the school level because young people have the most open minds that there are. Um, and they're also the most likely to use what their parents use. So they need to be educated. They need to be given the information about why they could choose a sustainable product instead and what's out there so that they can go home and have those conversations with mum and dad um, and siblings, uh, you know, and friends and say, well, actually, I don't see why I should buy a box of tampons and throw them away. Um, you know, I don't want to do that. I, I think I'd like to try period pants or a moon cup or, or whatever. And I think getting those conversations in at the grassroots level, at schools level and normalising these products to these kids is the important thing because it's people our age that are still, you know, sort of people 30 plus, shall I say, um, who tend to still come and say, I didn't know these things were available. Um, and e so even though we're out there, those I suppose the older you are, the less likely you are to engage with social media as well, which is another place that people hear about things. So I think, yeah, getting just awareness really is the big thing. It, it always has been, and it's improved a lot, but it's it's always the big thing for me is getting that out there. So I suppose the advantage, what you you know, what you really want is the brands, some of the ma more major brands, to see how they can make a benefit, make a make a profit, I suppose, out of some of these products. So it means the prices yeah. go up, but but then they then they will make it a make it much more aware, won't they? They'll put advertising out there and well this is it. I mean I've seen so many brands have jumped on the period pants bandwagon. So we've seen them, you know, from we've we've got the brands that originally started it, but then we've also got places like Primark, Sainsbury's, M S jumping on the bandwagon with yeah. their own brands of period pants. Um, now, most of these are short lived because at the end of the day, what these brands rely on is people coming back and buying another one. And the, the problem has always been with any reusable product that once you've got it, you don't need more. Yeah. Um, so that's the that's the commercial problem. Uh, it's not a problem for users, of course. It's fantastic because once you've got it, you don't need more. <laughs> so you don't have to remember to buy your tampons on the shop because you you've got your cup and yeah. it's you know or you've got your pads or whatever you've got um so you're sorted until you know they need replacing but that will be a few years down the line so commercially it's a bit more tricky for shops and that's why we see these things come and go and we see these brands enter the market and then leave again a year later because they've just ordered a shed load of stuff and uh well you might see marks and spencers hang around i suspect that's because they've got a slightly older customer base who use mm -hmm. period pants for other things uh, so yeah, you've got, that's true as well. Um, yeah. Bladder leakage is mm. is something that I get asked about a lot, and of course, period pants are another. That's another use for them, mm. and it's it's a fantastic thing because you know no matter how attractive they try and make tenor pants look on the telly, who wants to be going around wearing throwaway pants? That's something yeah. you do for a couple of days after childbirth, if at all. So you don't want to be wearing throwaway pants. It's not. No, it's a, it's a really good point. Actually, <laughs> I did see on your website that you're doing incontinence type things yes. now as well, which, which are actually that's a very good point that these things can be used for more than one thing. And again, we're almost siloed into thinking that something is for that purpose, whereas in fact, these things have got an even longer life. Um, oh, yeah. As, as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They can be used for different things. And a lot of our incontinence products are really good for periods and vice versa, because mm. the absorbency built into incontinence products tends to be a little bit better. And they are also they tend to be good at coping with the gush as well, yeah. because if you've got a bladder uh, weakness, then you're you're more likely to, to suddenly go whoosh. Mm. And the liquid is is not as thick as um, as blood. So it, it needs to really contain and absorb fast. So, yeah, so you, there was a lot of stuff out there. Um, but, yeah, that's what I'd like to change is get get more mainstream. And in some ways, these big brands jumping on the bandwagon do help in that because people have seen period pants in Primark and they're like, oh, what's that about? So they go do some research and find out that actually they're a thing and they've been a thing for a while and they just haven't been aware of it. So... So it does help. Oh yeah, uh, it definitely does. I mean, that, I've always seen it as if um, if you start something up as a small brand, as we both have, then 
if you see your ideas or what you were doing adopted by mainstream brands, it's a huge compliment, actually, because it means that they think it's a good idea. But they also it means that they know that their customers want what you, so you, they want what you're selling. So but so they have to sell it. But the other thing is, it means that they're, they're that the customers are being vocal enough and making enough choice to make them act on that. So it's, it, it means you exactly. serve the purpose. Someone said to me many years ago, um, if you're a small brand and you do something, but then you go under, just like your people with the period pants, but you've changed the world. Okay, it doesn't help put food on the table, but it means you've done something really good because you've you've caused mainstream industry to change just because of your actions. So I think that's quite a quite a key thing that's going on here. So even, you know, if, if Primark are doing period pants, that's great because that means that smaller brands have made that happen. Yes. Yes, definitely. I think, yeah, it is the biggest compliment in the world to be copied, isn't it? It is. It is. Sometimes. So, frustrating. <laughs> exactly, I was going to say. Frustrating. Like, if everyone's going to get into what I do, could they please come and buy it from me? Because, yes. you know, I've been doing this for years. I've been selling, you know, well, I started selling period pants and things in 2004 when I started the nappy business. So, yeah, so we're coming up to what will be 20 years next year. So it's a long time I've been doing this. So it would be, in, in many ways, it would be lovely if everyone said, oh, well, if you want period products, you've got to go to Earthwise Girls. It'd been around yeah. for so long. Um, and it, the world doesn't work like that. And, and that's fine. But um, Well, no, I think, yeah. I think it's an interesting point. And I raised this um, a couple of podcasts to go with, I was interviewing um, Vicky Smith on sustainable travel. I think it's when a lot of small brands put service in around just buying products. So um, yeah. I, was, I was basically urging the public don't go and research your holiday on Vicky's or other sustainable travel websites and then go and book it somewhere else. You've had that service um, yes. by the products from them because they need you to, they really need you to. And you you have had that service. So even if it is slightly more, please do it. And I'll say the same with this, you know, talk to Christine's, um, talk to Christine and join the Facebook group, join, have a look at Earthwise Girls, but buy your products from Earthwise Girls. Otherwise it won't exist that's Long. very true very true <laughs> we do need the orders yes definitely yeah, exactly. I think all... um yeah and I think that the service is an important thing to mention because one of the things that we offer that you're certainly not going to get at Primark is we can talk to you we can have a conversation or an email or or a messenger exchange and we can guide you through what might be the most suitable product you can tell us about your clotty periods and your uh, you know, you're flooding overnight and, and your daughter who doesn't want to use anything but this because she's autistic. And, you know, we can have those conversations and we do regularly with people. And that's what we offer that's very different. And likewise, you know, some people might go and say, oh, well, I can buy a pack of pads on Amazon or eBay cheaper. Yeah, great. But where's your where's your service? Mm -hmm. You know, yes, you'll get your product. But what you won't get is any service whatsoever. You literally buy a product, take it home. There is no... There's no comeback. There's no, um, oh, well, what's the best way to get stains out? What's the best way to deal with this? You know, um, or actually, I'm not sure this pad is absorbent enough for me now. Or maybe maybe I'm finding a problem with it. Um, I don't like the texture. I want something different. And we can talk about all that. Yeah. So that's where you get, that's what you get from a small business, typically. Yeah. Is you get that, that uh, relationship. And that's what a lot of our customers value. And that's why they keep coming back. Because they've had that service and they appreciate it. So they want to support us and, and keep us going, which is fantastic. So um, yeah, more of that would be great. Yeah, well, <laughs> that leads me on to the last thing is where can people find you, Christine? Okie okay, so, well, the obvious thing is our website, which is earthwisegirls.co.uk. And we are also on social media. We are on Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, for those who do that, and uh, Instagram. We are on Twitter, but we don't do much there. So Instagram and Facebook are, are the best ways to communicate with us on social media. And it is at Earthwise Girls on both platforms. So super easy to remember. Um, and there's links to those off our website as well. And I'll put some links in the bio of this podcast so people can find you. And tell us the name of that um, Facebook group again, the discussion one. Oh, yes. The Facebook group, The Bloody Waste. The Bloody Waste. I can the see that. The Bloody Waste. Quite a good one. Yeah, so oh, be yes. I think for a lot of people, just talking about some of these issues is going to to help them because it's because it's still a private thing. If you if they, you can talk to somebody about it, then it will, you know, will help and help you make the decisions about what you need 
for your own menstrual situation or your daughter's menstrual yeah. situation? Yeah. Definitely. It makes such a difference. I love seeing people chatting in that group. And I don't tend to sort of get, I don't tend to leap in and, and be the first to give advice if I don't need to, because the, the everybody supports each other. And I think that's just brilliant. That's how it should be. It's a community. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Well, I think that's, we've run out of time now. It's been absolutely lovely talking menstrual things with you, Christine. Um, so thank you very much for coming along to the Where Does It Come From podcast. Nice to be here. Thank you.